the hand that works. Hi, Mike at Northwest School of Fly Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to talk about the blue winged olive, mayfly, in particular, the betas. And that's what we're seeing this time of year, going into October, November, and the fall. And it's our fall blue winged olive hatch. And I want to talk to you about the myths and the truths and how this will make you a better angler, at least get you thinking a little bit of, in terms of this mayfly hatch. But first um, and foremost, uh, I'd like to make sure that uh, I t ask you to uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, by subscribing, you're supporting what I'm doing. And what I try to do more than anything else is do these types of videos uh, that either aren't on YouTube or take something that's on YouTube and kind of explain it a little bit farther for you. Uh, so welcome aboard, here we go. All right, the, the blue-winged olive mayfly, or the betis, is probably, certainly out here in, in, the, in the west, and, and I would imagine so on the east coast, but the blue-winged olive mayfly is probably the most important uh, mayfly hatch for a fly fisherman. And the reason is, is because uh, we get it at least twice a year. So the important thing for us is to, is to get our, our thinking right so it's always the first mayfly on the water in the spring. And it's always the last mayfly on the water in the fall or early winter. Having said that, so we got a blue winged olive hatch in the spring and one in the fall. And it's one of only a few mayflies that will do that. Most, most mayflies will emerge and then uh, lay their eggs and die and it's over. Uh, and that hatch, that might go on for a, a, a six weeks, and then you won't see that hatch the rest, rest of the year. But with the mayfly, we get, with the blue-winged olive, we get it twice a year. And it's important in the spring because it's the first mayfly in the water. And these fish have been, they're hungry. All they've been eating is, is midges during the winter. And all of a sudden there's this nice hatch of blue-winged olives. In the fall, it's the same thing. I don't know what it is about trout, but in the fall, they, they get, they, somehow they know that this is the last food on the water. And, and they go and have these great hatches and these, these fish really key in on the blue-winged olive hatch. I, I would like to say that almost all the rivers of the West have a blue-winged olive hatch. And for anglers like me, fly fishermen, uh, I just love this hatch. Uh, and, but there's some myths on this hatch uh, that kind of confuses everybody. And, and the first one is you got to have overcast skies. It's got to be a, a, you know, a low barometer and, it, and better yet, if it's, it's misty or raining, then they really come out. Uh, well, that's true. Uh, you'll see those, those types of hatches. But the on, and honest though, uh, the reality is, is that I've, I've fished just as many blue-winged olive hatches in the bright sun uh, at a high pressure system. Uh, and if I had to compare uh, catching trout during a blue-winged olive hatch on dark days versus trout catching trout on uh, uh, bright days with the blue-winged olive hatch, uh, I don't know, they're, they're almost the same for me. Uh, I'm not too sure about the science of that either. Uh, either way, I hear it, I hear it, I read it, I see it on YouTube, I hear people talking about it. Uh, it's going to be a great day to go down to the river, it's going to, the, the, the clouds are going to be low, it's going to be a real dark day, and the blueing dollars will be out, and sure enough, I'll roll in there and I won't see a hatch all day. So there's a little bit of a, a mystery to that, certainly there's no science to it, but old guys like me who's been fly fishing for, well, going on eight decades, uh, when, I, when I look at it from my perspective and I look at the science, I really don't see that as, a, as, as something that, that I even think about anymore. Uh, the second thing is, is that uh, a blooming olive hatch it, it can be really, really complicated. Well, I don't view it that way at all. Uh, I think and believe that a blooming olive hatch is not that complicated. Uh, what is complicated about the blue-winged olive hatch is is really something quite simple. In in the uh, in the spring, that blue-winged olive is a size 18, and in the fall, it's a size 20. So, from a logical standpoint, uh, you want to be fishing a size uh, 18 blue-winged olive uh, in the spring and a size 20 in the fall. You wouldn't put a size 20 blue-winged olive on 
in the spring, and you wouldn't tie a size 18 blooming olive in the fall. Uh, so you'll certainly catch more if you, if you do this right. Uh, one's a bigger than the other. And what causes that is, is the reality is, is that that fall blue winged olive is the brood of the spring blue winged olive and they haven't had a full year to really grow. And you will see those, those fall blue winged olives, uh, you'll see those fall blue winged olives in those different sizes. In the spring, you should be fishing a size 18. If you're fishing a size 20 or a size 16 in the spring, you will catch some fish. The same holds true in the fall. You can change sizes and still catch fish. But if you stay a size specific uh, in, in that two things, uh, you're gonna catch more trout as much as two to one by fishing the right size. On, on really picky days, you won't catch them at all on a size 18 in the fall. Uh, they got to be that size 20. So in essence, uh, it's not a complicated hatch if you, okay, if you have the right sizes right. Uh, and, and finally, the third thing, when we think of a blue-winged olive mayfly, it's a betis, uh, we think of it as having a blue-winged and an olive body. And in some cases, that may be true. But with a blue-winged olive, their body colors range in all different <laughs> colors, and, and, and it's amazing. They will go from a black body to a really dark, dark, dark uh, olive body to a, uh, uh, a light brown body to a, 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 a light olive color to a medium olive color. And, and those are those the species range and the time of the year it ranges. So it behooves you to actually catch one with a little shrimp net and off the water and really check the sizes. Be and the reason is, is because trout are triggered by color. And if they see hundreds, if not thousands of these little blooming olives coming over them in their window, and they, when they're looking up to take it, every single one of those hundreds or thousands has a really, really, you know, dark brown uh, body or a black body, and uh, and 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 that's what they're eating. Okay, and then you cast that same fish with this store-bought Chinese bright olive body is going to float by, and. Uh, they're just gonna ignore it. So color and sizes is really important. I always color, have a little pen. I have a couple pens I use. One's, uh, one can color it dark olive, the other I can, I can do black, and the other I can do brown. And that will darken that color both in my, my, uh, uh, my nymphal emergers and my uh, uh, hatching emergers. Uh, but by and by, uh, it's not that complicated of a hatch. What's really important for you is get the timing of the hatch. So blooming olives happen in all the rivers, but all rivers are different. Uh, you know, it's usually an afternoon hatch. It's usually, on some rivers I can go, it starts at one o'clock and it's gonna go to four. I can go another river, it's gonna start at two and go to three and so on and so on and so forth. So you need to plan where you're going because this is happening on, on all our rivers. So don't be afraid of the blooming olives. If I have any advice at all, I would have two boxes of blooming olives, one box of size 18 and one box of size 20. In the fall, I'm using size 18, uh, excuse me, size 20s, and in the spring I'm using size 18s. And if I have them all in one box, I'm not accidentally putting out there the wrong size. Um, for more videos like this, please subscribe, and I'll keep bringing more and more out like this. Hopefully, uh, we'll find the next one we, we show to you will be something else that's kind of neat and cool and different. Until then, I'll see you on the river.